Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm going to be sharing today my 5th and 7th grade curriculum and they are so very similar that I'm doing them together because they basically only have one subject that is uh, different. So instead of repeating everything twice and saying, oh, the only difference was this, I'm just going to do it all together. So I have four boys in homeschool this year, two first graders, one fifth grader, and one seventh grader. Those are the grades they would officially be in if they were in the regular school system. Um, but here at home, they kind of are on different grade levels, kind of depending on subject. So let's go ahead and get started. First things first, when each of our boys and me, my husband and I wake up, the very first thing we do after uh, personal care in the morning, such as brushing teeth and whatnot, is do our quiet time by reading our Bible, saying our prayers. So each of our boys have their own Bible and their own Bible journal. They read their Bible, whatever they want to read out of the Bible, and they take notes on what they read, what stood out to them, what does it mean, and some prayer, um, either requests or like actual prayer. So they do that. This is not part of school. This is life. This is required. We all do this in the morning. Um, and we also have uh, Bible during school as well. Okay, so for their writing, they are continuing this IEW ancient history based writing lessons. Uh, they ripped off the front cover so they are no longer allowed to have control of the book. I copy printouts for them and they use the printouts because I don't want them destroying the textbook which they've already begun to do last year. So they only have a few more lessons in this. Once they're done with this they're going to be doing the IEW um, let me grab it real quick so once they're done with that um, IEW book, they're going to be continuing on with this one, and this is the Rockets, Radar, and Robotics. This is their most struggled subject, so I figured that if I gave them something they're very interested in, which is kind of that techie type of stuff that maybe they'd enjoy their writing subject much better, I was originally going to go with the Medieval Times uh, history-based writing lessons because that's where we are in history, but our history is kind of such a big part of our curriculum as it is that I don't think their writing also has to follow history. So plus, because it's kind of boring for them, they don't enjoy the writing with the ancient history. So I wanted to make it more enjoyable for them by switching it up to this book. And this book covers ages, uh, grades six through eight. So it is a uh, grade appropriate for both of my boys, even though they're fifth and seventh grade. A part of the IEW writing is uh, they use this student resource book, which was a printable. So I printed out the entire resource book and I have it in this three wing binder for them. And it um, just helps them to write all of their required assignments. Um, easier and it also has all of the checklists so that they make sure they're actually doing what's required in the assignment and they're just not free writing and writing whatever they want. They're actually learning. Now for their math, both of my boys have gaps from what they didn't learn or forgot from the public school system. So I've been trying to catch them back up and fill in those gaps. So for math, we're using Singapore, and right now they are in the 4A level, which is about a fourth, fifth grade level in the public school system. And they're not doing this entire book, but I'm doing um, parts from each section. And if I notice that they're really, really good in a section and they get it well, I skip ahead. And if I notice that they're struggling and they don't really understand it, I slow down and I teach it to them and I help them and they continue practicing it until they move forward in the book and they understand it. And then that way when they're done with the 4A, they can go into the 4B and if they run through that quickly, they can go into the um, 5A, 5B and then we also have the 6A, 6B. So I'm really pushing for them to get um, back at grade level or above in their math. So for science, we've been doing um, the biology in allinonehomeschool.com and they've been doing the level L, which is the, the, the it's 
I'm sorry, the level M, which is the middle level, and that's for their age group. But since I got in some curriculum, I'm going to be switching them. And for my seventh grader, he is going to be starting this Apologia Exploring Creation with General Science. This is on about a seventh grade level, I believe. And he has the textbook here. It's a pretty large textbook. It's about double the size of the textbook he had last year, which was the Apologia um, Exploring Science with Human Anatomy and Physiology. And they really liked that. They both did that same book last year. So here's his textbook, and here is his notebooking journal that goes with it, which are like basically is the workbook, and it's pretty large as well. Hopefully he enjoys this um, general science. It's going to cover some human anatomy and then some other things as well. So he should do well in human anatomy because he's already done it. Now for my fifth grade science, again, we've been doing biology, which is kind of like a general science on that free website, but he want, really, really, really wanted to do chemistry this year. So I did go ahead and get him the elementary chemistry and physics Apologia, Exploring Creation with Chemistry and Physics. And here's his textbook and his notebooking journal. He will be going through that this year, and I really hope he enjoys it. I think he, he thinks he's going to be doing experiments that will possibly blow up our house, and that's why he's really excited. But we won't be doing those kind of experiments. <laughs> we need our house. <laughs> Okay, now on to foreign language, which I am actually pretty excited about because we're adding one part of foreign language. So we're continuing the Latin that we started last year. They did not finish the book. So we have here the Latin for Children Primer A, the textbook, and the DVDs. And I also got the Primer B this year for the continuation. If they finish this book this year, they can just continue on with the B. Um, also from last year, we're continuing on our Pimsleur Spanish audio lessons. And this is Spanish 1. This Pimsleur approach um, Spanish thing has five lessons, five um, five sets and each set has like 16 CDs with about 32 lessons. Also in addition to Spanish they're using this basic structures textbook too and this is a workbook it has different pictures and tells you what each picture what is happening in each picture in Spanish and then they kind of have to use deductive reasoning skills so um, that they can figure out what each Spanish sentence is about by looking at the picture and they start to put it together. If they have any questions, I help them. Um, I do know some Spanish. My mom is a very fluent in Spanish. Um, I'm Puerto Rican. Even though I don't fluently speak it, I do know some. Um, so we, we, they're working on this. And the addition to our foreign language, which we're going to be doing as a family, and I'm very excited about, as are the boys, is sign language for everyone. I've already started watching the DVDs, and the, the little old lady who teaches on the DVDs is very um, good. Uh, she's very clear, and she speaks slow enough to help you to understand it and grasp the signs easily the first time without speaking so slow that you're, like, falling asleep. The textbook has the pictures of the hand signals, the uh, sorry, the hand signs and the alphabet, and then she demonstrates how to do them in the DVDs, and it's so far looks really cool. I'm excited about this, and so are the boys. So that's foreign language for my two older boys. <clears throat> for grammar, they are continuing until they finish this step-by-step -step grammar volume one, and once they complete this, if they complete this this year they will be going on to volume two. And this is about um, higher elementary to early middle. And then book two is a step a little bit ahead that. So this is actually good for both age ranges that I have, my fifth and seventh grade boys. Uh, for, before I get into the last actual textbook that I have, for 
spelling. My All four of my boys, I think I forgot to mention this in my first grade curriculum video, they all use gradespelling.com. This is a free spelling website. It's amazing. Um, there are games, there are quizzes, there's a test. You can have your child email you their test results or print it out, which is what I do. I have them email it to me and I also print it out for my own record. For penmanship, my two older boys actually just get their Bible and they practice um, in cursive, writing out a couple of verses. Or my older one, who actually never learned cursive, he's actually practicing his alphabet in cursive, which he uses um, this laminated sheet that I have that shows each letter and how to form the letter. So they do that. For their reading, they're using all in one homeschool. Dot com at their own level so my fifth graders do, doing the reading level five and the seventh graders doing reading level seven and I love that because it has different poems they're never used to hearing these poems like how they rhyme and the weird old English how they speak and just the language of poetry how it it doesn't speak like the way we speak like in just linear sentences it kind of makes you think and they've been learning so I really enjoy that from that website for them. For typing, they are doing typingtest.com. There are many games for them to learn the home row keys, the other keys, and then it helps them improve their speed and them not having to look at the keyboard. And then they also do the actual test where they'll start typing out a paragraph uh, where it's timed and they can, sh they can see how many minutes, um, sorry, how many words per minute they type and I like them to write that down each week so that I can see if they're improving by playing the games, which they are. It's awesome. For art, health, and music, we're doing online homes all in one homeschoolonline.com. Again, it's a free site. It's great. They get to listen to different instruments and see what they look like. For the health portion of that website, they uh, read articles and watch fun videos on things like why it's important to eat vegetables, why it's important to exercise, why it's important to stay clean and bathe regularly, how to brush your teeth properly, stuff like that, health related. And then for art, we're actually going through um, a specific type of art. I think it's, I forget, it's um, the year two art. It's the second option. I think it's like early American um, time frame of arts for PE they do have a scheduled time every day for them to go outside and do PE either they play basketball do sprints up and down our road skate ride their bike or if they're inside on a rainy day they can play ping pong or a board game um, there's obviously some not much physical activity they can do inside the house if it's raining so we just do what we can to kind of make it uh, fun now for I believe the last thing, our Tapestry of Grace covers history, church history, literature, fine art, and geography. And we bought this last year. We're finishing it up um, this year. So once we're done with this, we will continue the rest of the year by using the Mystery of History, book two, which is the Early Church and Middle Ages which is where we would have continued with Tapestry of Grace if we had purchased uh, year two, but we were not able to because it's kind of, it is, it's not kind of, it's expensive and we just weren't able to this year. So this is how we'll be continuing. This um, is good for all age groups and it has the text, it has workbook pages, quizzes, um, it has the blank maps in the back and it suggests additional readings for each grade level if we want to go further in depth and spend a little more time on a specific time period. I think it also has like, um, yeah, it has like a timeline that you can do and it has memory cards that you can do and it's also written from a biblical perspective. Um, so I really like that as well. And I'm so excited to like start this. I still have six more weeks of the Tapestry of Grace and I'm just like so excited to finish that and start the Mystery of History because it's a completely new curriculum for us this year. Uh, so one last thing I did forget to mention um, for all four of the boys we do as a group we do use the all-in-one homeschool.com for Bible 
in the morning. Uh, where we do their Bible course, um, the New Testament course, and it tells you what to read. It, it links like a passage. And then she also asks questions and has the answers so that you kind of know what, how they should be answering. But I also always throw in my own additional questions and go deeper into it because once you study the Bible a lot for yourself, you kind of start putting things together from Old and New Testament and you have more knowledge so you can further expand their learning that way. Another thing we just got, which I did forget to show in my first grade, but this is for all of them and this is part of our Bible. This is... The Character Building for Families, Volume 1, and this goes through different, like, fruits of the Spirit, like patience and um, gentleness, contentment, truthfulness, stuff like that. And these are different character built characteristics that we need to be striving for, each of us, not only the kids. So right now we're on obedience, which is the first one in this book, and it breaks it down into daily lessons. Like for obedience, it has a couple of memory verses that we go over every single day until we finish the lesson. And they're, they pretty much memorize the Bible verse by like day two. And then it also has you do some reading from the Bible and it asks questions. It tells you um, how to instruct the kids to pray for help with these different characteristics. And uh, it, it tells you to like, it instructs you to make known to your children what is expected of them as far as this obedience or this characteristic goes so that they know how they can be obedient and that they can please God in being obedient to us, their parents, or any authority that we place over them, like grandparents and stuff. So, so far so good with this new character building um, workbook. That is the entire curriculum that I chose for our fifth and seventh graders and also a few that you saw that are for all of them together, really for us as a family together. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching. Um, any links mentioned will be in the description box below. If you're interested in hearing what our kindergarten, I'm sorry, not kindergarten, what are my first grade curriculum choices are, go ahead and check out that video, which will also be linked below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.